who you've given to us to equip us with your word and to equip us for the walk ahead. We commit this class unto your hands and we pray that by the Spirit of God, you will direct everything that is taught here. And that, Lord, our instructor will speak by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. And every one of us, Lord, will be impacted by the knowledge of what it takes to build your kingdom. And that, Lord, will be driven every day by the kingdom. And that, Lord, will be driven by the things and the purposes of the kingdom to see your kingdom established here on earth. We praise you and we thank you for a wonderful class in advance. Blessed be your holy name. For in Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Sai, uh, for leading us in prayer today. Uh, and we will continue uh, from where we stopped in the last class. So we have started uh, Kingdom Builders, the new uh, publication. We were doing Kingdom of God uh, in the last several weeks. So Kingdom Builders is what we are doing now. And we just started like with some of the introductory um, uh, notes there. So chapter one, we looked at that briefly and then we came over to chapter two, which is about the king and the kingdom. So a um, couple of things we said in chapter two uh, is that, you know, we must, we must first of all learn to relate to the king when we talk about kingdom building because our relationship with the king is what will help us be a true kingdom builder. Um, so it's easy to get lost in uh, serving God in terms of activities, but you know, if we don't have that personal connect and that deep relationship with God, then we're really missing out on the point. And then we saw how in uh, what uh, Paul writes to the Corinthian church, he uh, says that there are several co-workers, uh, different ones God calls to do um, you know, something that is uh, that they are called to do. And uh, we work together with the fellow workers and uh, all of us together are building God's kingdom. Uh, and we also saw that the foundation must always be the Lord Jesus and we have to build uh, only on this foundation. So uh, kingdom building starts with Christ as the foundation. So some of these key uh, truths we have uh, seen in the last class. Uh, and we also uh, saw the fact that uh, we must give glory to God because uh, ultimately, even though uh, we are all serving in different capacities, it is God who gives us the ability to serve him. So that's what we were talking about. In fact, we were talking about uh, giving glory to God uh, and uh, making sure that whatever we do, um, that is about the kingdom of God and that is about glorifying the name of God. And uh, we must be very careful that uh, nothing should try to attract God's glory, uh, you know, onto our lives. So uh, that is another very important foundation that the kingdom builder has to get straight uh, before doing anything for God's kingdom. So uh, I think we were on page eight. So we will begin once again from page eight. Uh, and this is APC publication, Kingdom Builders. So if you haven't downloaded your copy yet, you can do that from the website. You can just go to apcwo.org forward slash books and uh, get your PDF version of Kingdom Builders. Okay. Yes. So, um, yeah, we said that uh, the person who is sent is supposed to um, uh, supposed to glorify the person who sends him because that's that's what Jesus said. So it's not about the glory uh, of uh, you know somebody uh, who is given the task, but the giver of that uh, um, ability and call, that's the person that we are out to glorify. And we must make sure that we never um, uh, try to take God's place or God's glory. There's a scripture in our notes here from Isaiah 42 and verse 8, uh, which says, I am the Lord, that is my name, and my glory I will not give to another nor my praise to carved images. So uh, that's the kind of God we serve. Uh, in the Old Testament, there are many scriptures where, where you see that our God is uh, 
jealous in that sense okay and it's it's uh, um uh, jealous here it's not a negative uh, jealous but uh, it's it's more like you know uh, god's honor and god's glory is something that nobody can share uh, and nobody can withstand because we are mortal beings and the kind of glory that god deserves he is immortal uh, we 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 saw that scripture that paul wrote to timothy he said you know that uh, he he dwells in in light immeasurable light uh, the uh, great god so he is this great god whose glory we cannot even um, you know dare dare to contain so there's no question actually there's no question of uh, sharing in his glory and uh, god uh, also spoke and said that he would not give his glory to anyone else so why are we talking about this See, because when we uh, get into kingdom building uh, it's very easy for us to um, slowly change our mindset you know when when you have more influence when you when you seem to be recognized when you um, sort of get a hold of what god wants you to do you know sometimes in that in that sense of power or sense of influence uh, in a very in in a very uh, subtle way we can move on to uh, a place where we are basking in the glory you know, that that comes from appreciation that comes from applause that comes from um, you know uh, like just being recognized so uh, when we start out saying okay i never never want to take god's glory it will just make us more careful and um, we make sure that whether it is in the beginning or you know later on on our journey wherever we are we are clear that it is only god who deserves our uh, glory and it is only god who deserves all the glory because the other um, uh, thing that can happen is that okay we are willing to give god the glory and most of us say that most of us pray that we say okay god we give you the honor all glory to your name but somewhere in in our hearts 99% of the glory goes to god 1% i'm sure god won't mind you know so uh, that's like a feel good for us we don't uh, we we take that 1% and we feel yeah god is okay and um, i also feel great to uh, be um, you know basking in the glory that i'm receiving but you know one beautiful example that the early church set for us is when um, peter and john you know, they go and they heal a man who's crippled and how long is this man crippled he was crippled for 40 years since his birth he never walked so at the gate beautiful they go and they minister uh, a miraculous healing or uh, recovery uh, to him and when people look at them all the people surrounding uh, that place they look at peter and john as if they do they have done something amazing as if these two people are not human beings but god so they respond at that time they look at the crowds this is in acts 3:12 they say why do you marvel at this or why look so intently at this as though by our own power of godliness we had made this man walk okay so you notice that the early church we talk about uh, it walk, walking in incredible manifestation of god's supernatural power but they were always careful to direct the uh, appreciation of man the applause of man the praises of man to uh, the person who deserves it that is god so peter and john even in this case they say why are you people looking at us it's not us but it is god okay and this man uh, you know what has made this man walk and then they give them the explanation that he gained strength through the power in the name of jesus so you know that's an example we can all always have uh, and uh, direct the glory back to god and uh, when it comes to um, kingdom building we we see that jesus said about himself he said i do not receive honor from men so that is also something uh, that we must um, uh, receive in our own hearts uh, and uh, keep that as an attitude throughout otherwise 
receiving honor from men becomes our motivation okay uh, uh, it can be a good motivation but many times it can be uh, a wrong pull on our hearts because we might end up doing things for the praises that people have to give us okay of course the flip side is uh, praises come from people but you know uh, if we rely too much on what people have to say uh, even when criticisms come we we will we will be molded by that so we don't want to depend on what people are saying in order for us to build the kingdom of god so at our core we must depend on the applause that comes from god uh, and uh, so you know a kingdom builder has to be secure in these things and make sure that the motive you know the motive of of our hearts is uh, correct and that our eyes are fixed on god and not on people so in uh, jesus times you had pharisees and hypocrites who would do the right thing but you know looking at the motives of their hearts jesus commented many times and said look you want to receive the reward of man but that's not what uh, is important but the reward should come from god so in kingdom building you know let's remember that we must be careful not to please men okay uh, 1 thessalonians 2 verses 4 to 6 uh, this is on page 9 if someone can read it i think that will be very helpful uh, 1 thessalonians 2 verses 4 to 6 page 9 kingdom builders shall i read ma'am yes yes i'm going please do thanks ma'am it says but as we have been approved by god to be entrusted with the gospel even so we speak not as pleasing men but god who tests our hearts for neither at any time did we use flattering words as you know nor a cloak of covetousness god is witness nor did we seek glory from men either from you or from others amen amen thank you thank you abhi so uh, we see the clarity in paul's attitude there uh, whatever paul did he saying it's not to seek the appreciation of man but uh, he starts out by saying his desire was to be approved by god so uh, in what we do the first question that we have to ask ourselves is does god approve of this is god happy with my preaching teaching ministry any form of ministry that i am engaged in uh, and if god approves of it my honor comes from god and you know let's say even man approves it that would be wonderful man honors it that would be wonderful but if if in case you know it's approved by god but not by man it's still okay because at the end of the day our conscience is clear and we know that god is happy with what we are doing so uh, that's the way a kingdom builder must move forward and what to do when uh, appreciation comes from man okay and honor comes from man there's a wonderful scripture in psalm 115 and verse 1 which can be a prayer uh, so in this verse uh, the psalmist writes not unto us o lord not unto us but to your name give glory because of your mercy because of your truth so uh, whenever appreciation comes from man we can direct it back to god and say god not to us yes you know um we are being recognized but lord whatever we are receiving not unto us but lord let the glory be to your name it's only because of who you are so your mercy your truth your faithfulness in our lives that we are able to serve you we are able to work in your kingdom wherever you have positioned us so in kingdom building the motives of the heart are more important than the work itself and we also see that in the kingdom there is uh, authority which is given for us to exercise uh, and you know that that uh, uh, that 
is an incredible thing because otherwise nothing will get done no no work of god will get done so god empowers us he gives us dominion he gives us authority and we can use it and we can see wonderful things happen you know when jesus sent out um, some disciples to go and do the work of the ministry um, in the book of luke they come back thrilled and they say wow at your name jesus we saw demons fleeing we saw this happen we saw that happen so they were moving in the authority of the kingdom but again you know it's important for us to know where this authority is coming from otherwise you know we can get all excited about the work that is being accomplished by the power of god and we might think that it's all happening because of us so being submitted to the king positioning ourselves in right relationship to the king when it uh, comes to authority uh, is also equally important so james 4:7 it says submit therefore submit to god resist the devil and he will flee from you so how can we exercise our authority resist the devil and he will flee from you is the exercise of our dominion but before that comes therefore submit to god so our authority flows from the place of submission and we've said this when we uh, talked about um believers authority in the last uh, semester we said to the the extent that we are submitted to god uh, we can exercise our dominion and authority here on earth so our dominion and authority in a in a sense it is you proportional may be the wrong word but I, i think you get the point but it's proportional to our submission to god so the the greater submission we have to our king the greater authority you and i can walk in so submission to god is extremely important submission and obedience and we can position ourselves in that manner to be an effective kingdom builder so uh, here it, it's put in a better way the statement says to the extent he reigns in me to that extent he can reign through me okay so we let god reign and we stand submitted under his authority okay the next thing uh when we talk about kingdom building uh, we said that there are fellow workers there are co-workers in the kingdom of god so we are all serving together now it is also possible to we so far we talked about having the right motivation within ourselves Now it's also possible that we elevate people above God when we observe them serving well. Now, naturally, it's 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 uh, uh, you know it, it's a it's a reaction we all have a response when we see someone serving well. Uh, we we uh, you know give them a very high high place uh, in our minds, and we think, oh wow, this person is honourable. They're doing a good job in the ministry. that is fine but if we um, you know err on making that person greater than god that also wouldn't be correct so to glory in man is is not something that uh, god is happy about so there are again you know uh, scriptures that uh, are enlisted here i won't go through all of them but 1 corinthians 4:6 uh, i'll i'll read that it says now these things brethren i have figuratively transferred to myself and apollos for your sakes that you may learn in us not to think beyond what is written that none of you may be puffed up on behalf of one against the other so puffed up on behalf of one against the other so you see in the corinthian church what had happened was uh, you know paul uh ministered and then for a while he wasn't around so he had another minister apollos uh, take his place and you know serve there uh, in the church but later on paul comes to know that there were factions in the church so there were people who liked the way paul ministered the way paul preached 
Uh, but then there were others. You know, Apollos was a very, uh, you know, well-learned, eloquent man. You know, that's that's how he uh, came across. So there were people who said, no, 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 Apollos is better than Paul. So factions, uh, you know, came to be in the church, and there were there were divisions. And some people were supporting Apollos, some people were supporting Paul. So in that context, he's telling the people, look, what is this? Is Apollos someone or is Paul someone? Ultimately. It's God who gives the increase, and it's God who, you know, God who blesses the work that we do. We are all fellow workers in the kingdom of God. And uh, on the part of the believers, he says, "Look, it's it's not right at all that you you get puffed up on behalf of a certain worker in the kingdom of God." So, uh, how does this apply, you know, to to us? Basically. When we see ministers of God, who are even let's say, uh, like in the kingdom or or uh, in our church or something like that, there shouldn't we shouldn't be elevating them above God. Okay, so yes, we honor them, but we must be sensitive, you know, not to uh, um, put them on a pedestal and and sort of uh, worship them the way we worship. God, because ultimately it is God who deserves all our glory, and that glory should never go to man in any way. Okay. Uh, now uh, I'm just going section by section. So there are there are important points mentioned in uh, some section, all the sections. Some of them flow, but you know you you might also feel that you know certain concept is a little disconnected from the previous point that I made. But uh, please uh, just bear with me. So the next. Uh, Part here is about being accountable to God, who will judge all things. So again, you know, accountability in the kingdom of God is very, very important. Now Paul writes; he says uh, there are two passages given here. So in these passages, basically, what Paul is saying: Look, um, uh, if I think about my own life, I cannot find something that is wrong. Okay, I'm uh, not with pride, but basically he's saying in my own understanding, I I feel like I've dealt with everything. I've brought it before God. I have uh, asked for forgiveness. I have uh, tried to live righteous, but still I don't judge myself because there will come the right time towards the end uh, of the age when when it is Christ who will judge all things. Okay, and Christ who will um, judge all things rightly. So uh, we will just wait. For Christ to judge everything, so uh, and you know why he talks about this. Basically, he's saying that ultimately we are accountable to God. Okay, uh, and a kingdom builder needs to live in that manner, having accountability to God. So here in our notes, uh, you know, it's beautifully put down that accountability means being true to God. But at the same time, accountability means being true to ourselves, being true to our family, being true to those we serve, true to those who watch over our lives. So, having a clear conscience, okay, uh, and uh, making sure that our motives are right, making sure that you know we we are doing things right and for the right reasons. So uh, that's what a kingdom builder would do, and you know um, why? How does this apply? It applies in many ways. In fact, it applies all the time. Uh, you know, when when we are judging ourselves, being true to God and being being true to ourselves. You know, every now and then, as as someone who's serving God, uh, this this question will come to us, isn't it? Like it could just be. Uh, somebody maybe our superior asking us a question, saying, "Hey, have you done this?" Now, at that point, I can say anything that I want, but if I'm true to God and if I'm true to myself, you know, I I'm walking in integrity. I'm being accountable to God. Now, maybe the person who entrusted me with that task won't research and find out whether I'm telling the truth or not, right? It won't matter. Maybe it'll never uh, it, it, like I I can just sort of get away with it, but when I walk with the attitude that look, I'm accountable to God. I have to be true to myself in what I'm saying, and I have to be true to God. You know that that will preserve us 
to serve God uh, with purity. Okay? And I gave you one small example. Now, this way, everything we do in kingdom building, right? Now, some of us, we will set up churches. We're talking about House of God and the other course. We will run churches. And there are so many things involved. The way we manage uh, money, the way we, we um, communicate with the people, the way we uh, manage uh, human resources. In everything, we need accountability. If we are not accountable, you know, one way or the other, right? Uh, and, you know, we, uh, and, and uh, uh, I don't know if we will talk about this later, but as long as we maintain this pure conscience, Right, we will be able to serve God well, but you know, there is um, the danger of self deception that we could come into. You know, the most dangerous thing is when um, I know something is wrong and I know how to justify that. Okay, uh, so as a kingdom builder, in the smallest things, if we can learn being accountable to God, accountable to ourselves, right, uh, then that carries on with us. No matter what we do, a big or small is not the issue. But being sincere, having a clear conscience. In fact, uh, Paul writes to Timothy, he says, when you entrust the ministry to faithful men, he also adds a point. He says, find people with a good conscience, people who are true to God. So these things matter. They matter a lot. So this, this section is talking about having accountability and uh, uh, you know making sure that we are transparent okay, to, to all the people who um, God has put in our lives so that, you know, that there isn't, um, let's say, a false front in front of the church and then, you know, you have another front elsewhere because that wouldn't be the right way of living and, of course, it would never be the right way of serving God or building his kingdom. Okay, so we need to be accountable. Uh, and in this section, there's also an encouragement uh, to you know, be true to God in such a way that we don't make our life about our reputation. Okay? Because uh, when Apostle John writes to the seven churches uh, in the book of Revelation, he addresses one particular church in Sardis and he says that I, God, the Lord Jesus comments, about this church and says, I know your works, that you have a name that you are alive, but you are dead. Okay. So what's happening with this church in service? The church has a reputation. You have a name. Okay. So again, you know, it's about being true to oneself. It's about being true to um, uh, that that. Uh, person that we project because when we are being true now you're the same thing in this church it had a name that it was alive but it was actually dead so having a front in you know, before people and then being someone else there is a disconnect in that and that's lack of integrity but instead you know, if we can maintain uh, our accountability uh, to God then we will not so much you know worry about our reputation we'll continue to live our lives uh, accountable to god and whatever uh, you know that uh, whatever reputation that brings us you know that's that's fine so basically having integrity right and and being um, accountable to god not worrying too much uh, about our reputation okay uh, so again you know, this is very important for a kingdom builder because um, you see it, it's sometimes easier to uh, be accepted by people because the people think we are anointed. Okay. Now, behind the scenes, the story can be very different. Now, God can be disappointed in our lives, right? Our, our walk with Him, our private walk with Him, um, you know, our accountability to Him, the truth of our hearts, all that nobody knows. Only people see outside. And, you know, sometimes uh, uh, pastor always says this, pastor says like, see, the anointing comes from God. So when we are ministering in that anointing, actually the ability is from God, right? And sometimes God works in spite of us. God works in spite of us. But we cannot 
think that oh okay just because i'm able to do powerful ministry i'm seeing the demonstration of god's supernatural power every time everything is fine with me no it may not necessarily be fine okay so but for the people they only perceive that oh this individual is so anointed so anointed that's okay that's a good thing but ultimately it's god you know who, who sees everything and what is the point in um uh, you know having the approval of man while god is disappointed you know having a reputation that we are alive we are anointed you know, behind the scenes only god knows the reality so uh, you know these these are things these are foundational things in the life of any kingdom builder that we must be careful to give glory to god uh, we must be careful to receive our honor from god we must be careful not to exalt you know any any uh, human being above god we must be careful uh, to um, be accountable uh, be true to god in every way so uh, some foundational things here that uh, we want to talk about before we go any further uh in kingdom building so based on what we've discussed in this uh chapter uh i think i'll i'll pause and uh, have your thoughts right now we could talk about you know we uh, said that it's important for us to deepen our relationship with the king okay when we uh say kingdom building you know, christ should have the preeminence so uh that is very important and kingdom building should follow from there so how can a kingdom builder maintain this strong relationship with the king okay so maybe we can start there and then you can also share your comments on this whole thing about uh, accountability and honor and all of that and then we can move on to the next chapter here so how can one maintain a deep relationship and a connect with the king as a kingdom builder Yeah, uh, good morning, yes, Mandy. Yes, yes. Uh, I think one is to to keep our sights uh, on Him, like uh, being doing being intentional about uh, seeking Him, because it's like being what I'm, I'm understanding. Being a king, kingdom builder is not something that comes easily. It's something that you have to to work hard to, toward. So, keeping our eyes on Jesus, reading His Word, praying, and the Holy Spirit will will mold us. Thank you, Pastor. Yes, thank you, thank you, Mangi. So, Mangi is saying uh, to keep our eyes fixed on God. That will help us stay on track. Okay, Abhishek, taking it to the next level. He's saying die to self. Yeah, definitely, definitely, Abhishek. Um, yeah so as we are serving the lord that's where the submission comes in right so the extent that the lord reigns in me is the extent to which he will be able to reign through me so when we die to self we let him uh, take over completely okay uh, so samuel i'll i'll come to you say samuel says you to deeply in the word of god and constant fellowship uh okay say i'm saying Yeah. So, uh, uh, sorry, sorry, say just a moment. I I just muted you. Uh, please excuse me. I I will finish reading Samuel's uh, comment here, and then you could uh, unmute yourself. I I hope that's okay. Uh, so I I was saying um, Samuel has mentioned deeply rooted in God's word and constant fellowship. God speaks through His word, not lying at all times, no matter what circumstances. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Samuel. Yes. Say please. Go ahead. <coughs> Yes. Yeah, so what I just also want to add was um, constant self evaluation of where we are standing and how we carry out our service in building the kingdom, because it's very easy that unconsciously we just give in to taking the glory, you know, listening to the praises. So just sometimes reflecting on our day to day or month to month. activities or service of how we did this just basically stepping back and reviewing you know with the holy spirit speaking to us so that we can um we can quickly repent and turn away from 
um, taking the glory or, you know, um, taking the praises and the applause of men. I think that way to help us to it help us stay in check in ensuring that um, we never steal God's glory in building God's kingdom here on earth. So that, that's what I wanted to have. Yes, yes. Thank you, Say. That's true. So, you know, keep ourselves uh, in check at all times uh, and be careful to give the glory to God, um, which is due to Him. Uh, and how, oh, yeah, Anita says the same thing periodic check on our spiritual life, checking what actually drives us to ministry. Okay, great. Um, Charles, <coughs> excuse me. It is quite possible to get distracted while we are in the kingdom ministry. We can find the Absaloms who can take our attention. So if our spiritual antennae are not alert, uh, it will be easy to concentrate on the gate and fail to see the king. Okay, We need to know our king and keep posted about his rule. Yes, sure, sure, Charles. Um, and I think when we have our anchor in our relationship with the king uh, in some way you know uh, it, it helps us it, it always helps us to come back um, and relate rightly with God see uh, for example I am saying now as a kingdom builder if I am engaging in some form of ministry and I'm only getting busy with ministry and you know there's people's praises there's people's honor coming my way uh, but I'm not spending time with God or I'm not spending time in the word of God prayer things like that where I am deepening my relationship with God and having my intimacy with God uh, you know somewhere my my conscience uh, it, it will lose its sensitivity because when I come back into the presence of God, every time I have to be accountable. You know, every time there, there will be the ministry of the Holy Spirit convicting me about, hey, you, know, you said this, you did that, that was not right. So I have to set it right in order for me to deepen my relationship with God. So keeping that relationship, maintaining that relationship on a daily basis is very, very important. Okay. And more so when things get busier. Because Otherwise, we lose that anchor. And once you've lost your anchor, your ship is all over the place. So, and that's what, uh, you know, many of you are saying here, not get distracted. Have a periodic check. And all this works when we are in relationship with the king. So, maintaining that relationship is the key. Okay. Uh, Devi says, having genuine fear of the Lord. Yeah, very good point there. So, having genuine fear of the Lord it is his work overall. Correct. Remember we said uh, the kingdom, thy kingdom. It's not my kingdom. It's not your kingdom. It's not my church. It's not your church. It's his church. I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. So we must recognize that the work is his work and we are his servants. Then Charles is saying the sensitivity is quite paramount. Daily encounter, yes, true, true, um, Charles. So we must maintain that. Okay, uh, how do we uh, respond when we go unrecognized, um, you know, when, when we're serving? And let's say you, uh, nobody appreciates you for the work that you're doing. How, how do you react to that? So far we talked about receiving all the honor. Now, let's suppose there's no honor coming your way. Okay, Anita says joyful. Has anyone had an experience like this in kingdom building where you were not appreciated? Many times, Pastor, especially if you're a woman minister. Okay, yeah, Billa. Yeah, sure. Billa, you want to, I mean, if you don't mind, you want to share some more? Yes, uh, yes, Pastor. So, uh, uh, so Bula, sorry to interrupt you. Uh, another point is that this is on record and generally this goes uh, on YouTube after uh, um, the recording. So, you know, you could share whatever you're comfortable with. Yes, yes, yeah. Pastor. Yeah, please go ahead. Uh, so, thanks for the reminder anyways. <laughs> yes. So, definitely there are challenges that we face. Especially, I, I feel like... Uh, 
when you're a, when you're a woman you're not easily accepted or the new minister also is like you know you don't uh, have that uh, acceptance i would say and appreciation but then i just feel like this question that you have asked is a tied to the question the previous question that you uh, spoke about and the discussion we had it's all tied to our relationship with our king when that relationship becomes a deep one a one that is intimate when it becomes that uh, it becomes the matter of the heart when you are so passionately involved with god when you are so passionately involved in that relationship and then what happens like something that was driving me throughout in no matter what the challenge was there's something like you know that you live for the audience of one not for anybody else that you run this race as the book of hebrews says like you know the we need to keep our eyes on jesus and run this uh, you know in the amplified bible it talks about the appointed course that is set before us and we keep running that no matter whether you get the appreciation or not whether you receive the honor or not whether you are accepted or not but you are doing it for the king so that keeps you going in spite of whatever challenge or comes our way Okay. Um, yeah. Sorry, I, I got logged out of the call, and I'm sure Bula, you you shared right. I missed what you shared though. Yes, I did. So I okay, actually okay. thought I my internet got disconnected. <laughs> no, 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 no. It it was me. I ho I hope you shared fully, and you didn't. Uh, yes, I did. Stop. Yes, I did. Pass. Okay, great, great, great. Yes. Thank you, thank you. Thank so you. I'll watch it. I'll watch it on YouTube. Yeah, sure. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, thanks, Vila. Thank you for sharing. So, yeah, it can happen that you know we don't get recognized, but uh, then again, the the right attitude comes from uh, being anchored in our relationship with God. So that's something you know we uh, can maintain uh, because of our intimacy with God. Okay. Um, Another thing here, uh, these questions are, by the way, in your in our notes and uh, you know very uh, relevant and pertinent questions. Uh, how about you know getting our identity from uh, a ministry or a ministry affiliation? Is is that is that something we struggle with? And if we do, then you know how do you deal with that? Getting our identity from a certain uh, it could be a denomination, it could be a you know maybe a very successful ministry. How do you deal with that? And could you uh, rephrase your question? Okay. Um, basically, it's like you know. Sometimes we we have a sense of pride that we are we are associated with a certain ministry or a denomination or you know a group of people a group of ministers of god or a certain minister of god who is very successful and um, uh, it's as if we are drawing our identity from that so i i just talked about not elevating people okay so in that context i'm saying um you know do we make that a big deal our associations with people do we make that a big deal or how do we deal with our associations It, it does is that rephrased better samuel um not sure like um hmm. so what are you saying so we are doing we're doing god's work yeah but uh let's say let's say we want them to come to apc mm -hmm. or for fellowship 
Mm-hmm. So are you asking should we mention APC at all or should we not like No it's it's not just about uh you know bringing someone to the ministry uh it's it's more like you know gaining your identity from that ministry for example uh let let me say um now that i i am part of apc if if it brings a sense of pride to me that hey you know we are better than everybody else uh and you know my identity itself is is rooted in this if anything happens to my association with you know apc and the ministry that i do it shouldn't be like i'll i'll hit rock bottom you got it my identity should be in christ and my identity should be in the king while i'm building the kingdom okay hmm. yeah you give you give the answer i gave the answer yeah i see <laughs> so so yeah so these are things uh, to think about and to just set our hearts right um, as we go about building god's kingdom and charles says uh, yes identity can be drawn like serving in an evangelistic enterprise and that you are moving cit- cities with the gospel and you could tend to boast of it and introduce yourself and tell the people of your profile correct correct yeah so uh, yeah not to make that an identity yes you know sometimes uh, it is needed because then people wouldn't know like if if somebody asks you where are you from which ministry do you work for it may be important to say i am from this ministry and this is the role in which i serve but at the end of the day you know that association that ministry association shouldn't be everything because what happens when people don't introduce you like that uh you know it's sad to say that ministers of god can get offended that oh no they didn't tell my Uh, they didn't talk about my years of experience or uh, you know i i they, i wasn't introduced properly <laughs> so you know uh yeah so that's what we're saying uh, we, we must have our identity in christ uh, and these are but functions right uh, whatever we are, we are doing uh, in different ministries okay and avni is saying yeah so having our identity in the ministry Uh, or our associations like we could say oh uh, i i serve with pastor so and so okay and that becomes my identity now what happens if i'm not going to serve with pastor so and so for whatever reason right god says okay now you move to another part of the world and then you're on your own what happens to your identity so uh, these are things that you know we have to work on hmm so it's all saying uh, a bishop introduced not as a bishop can run hurt yeah correct so yeah so but if we have the right identity then it won't matter uh, it won't even matter uh, sometimes when people don't know your name right you go you serve and they they don't even address you by name it's fine because you went there to serve god you went there to impart to the people you've done your part so you know you're happy you're accountable to god um and uh, that's what matters at the end of the day so having the right motives and to know that god is going to judge the hearts god is going to judge the work that we do um uh, so you know we stay true to our conscience we stay stay true to god and at the end of the day give all glory to god and that's how a kingdom builder should serve okay so uh, at this point let's go ahead and take a 10 minute break we'll come back and uh, we will look at the next chapter here which has to do with the holy spirit directing the work of a kingdom builder so yes so uh, let's go for the break class and uh, see you soon thank you